Okay, so there is a X200 and two X230s with, well, Lieberboot on them. And I assembled these uh, pretty much uh, out of spare parts and one from a lot auction. So either way though, uh, let's get into the build. This is my X200. Um, well, essentially it was uh, made out of spare parts from an X201 and a lot of leftovers from when I used to uh, essentially just assemble a bunch of these things, but uh, those days are kind of over and these are a little bit harder to come by now, but essentially I had enough leftover parts to, well, build a functional one. So um, we're just gonna be adding some shielding. Build process is about the same as the X201 and vice versa. It's already been repasted. Um, I added a new CMOS battery, and after that, uh, since uh, this motherboard's been in storage for I don't know how long, it uh, was purchased off eBay, I'm going to be essentially just, well, upgrading it to the latest EC firmware. Unfortunately, that did not work the uh, first time with my uh, standard, like, get El Torito method. So uh, I went with a CD, and um, with that, I was able to use the X201 dock and flash a new system program and EC firmware. Okay, so I flashed the latest testing release onto the X200. Um, the build process was relatively simple, but at the time the release uh, turned out to be a little bit buggy, but I will get into that a little bit later. So, at the time though, it did just start right up, and I was uh, gonna install a Wi-Fi card, but they ended up uh, sending me the wrong one. Okay, so I didn't assemble all of these at one time, so I'm gonna be moving on to the X230, kind of in chronological order, and I have one that essentially uh, was already flashed with core boot with and it's repasted. It's pretty much uh, almost set up rather than a few cosmetic things such as paneling. But uh, we're gonna be talking about the uh, lot auction one that I actually uh, went through and uh, rebuilt. Uh, process for flashing it's about the same. You just select uh, two to update system model. And on this one, uh, I am going to be making a backup of the, well, uh, 2.77 OEM ROM. But either way, it'll have the latest EC firmware, and we can move on to repasting. Okay, so the thermal paste on this one is actually quite old, and it had this weird divot in the heatsink. So I ended up having to rob one from an unfortunate parts unit. And I also did get some uh, new CMOS batteries for these. But uh, to be honest, I imagine a few of the X230 batteries have a need to be replaced, but uh, not all of them. Either way though, I don't want to open these up again, so we're going to be using two new CMOS batteries. And for this one, essentially just reassembled it, flashed the uh, two flash chips, and... At the end, uh, did a little bit of wire management. So we're gonna be uh, essentially just reattaching the speaker and everything to make it look all nice and then uh, reassemble everything. So this is now mostly done and we can just add the screws on the back after adding the mouse pad and um, Later on, I'm going to be uh, getting some caddies and adding, well, these SSDs. Either way, though, um, everything seemed to be starting to take shape, and I was ready to, well, test the systems. So, here's where I encountered some problems. Although everything seemed to be working fine on these, when I closed the lid and let it go to sleep mode, um, well... There's a S3 resume issue. Uh, it's not actually something to do with Weber boot apparently, but the core boot release they're uh, using. So the bug did seem to be resolved after I uh, 
rebuilt the ROMs a day or two later, so it was just kind of unfortunate timing. Um, so here, the one on the right has the uh, essentially new ROM and it comes up, well, with a uh, working uh, suspend. That problem was uh, actually quite timely resolved, but uh, unfortunately the testing release uh, did not exactly uh, fix the issues with the X200's uh, sleep and resume, and it still did the uh, weird uh, reboot when you close the lid, which uh, is not an ideal thing for a laptop, but I did run stable later, and after uh, that, everything seemed to work fine. Okay, so my X200 was looking pretty much stock at this point with, uh, well, Libreboot on it, but I noticed one issue. Well, the key doesn't work for the left arrow key. I uh, did have some other keyboards. I had a donor keyboard for the X200, and I did end up settling on this really grimy but working keyboard. So uh, I tried cleaning it up with uh, disinfectant. I uh, eventually settled on replacing the keycaps with something a lot cleaner. But either way though, um, everything seemed to work after and I did end up uh, with a working X200 made out of uh, spare parts. Moving on, I guess to the uh, conclusion of this video, I should uh, mention a few things. Currently, um, as of filming, the testing release should work at least on the X220 and X230. Um, I don't know about the X200 at the moment, and um, keep in mind though, this is the testing release for Libreboot. So you can uh, download a ROM for the X200 on the stable uh, release and use the ICH uh, 9 gen tool to change the MAC address. And everything should work uh, relatively fine except uh, for a little bit of text, uh, at least on my system. Also, I should mention I've mainly been uh, compiling my own core boot ROMs instead of uh, using Libreboot's build system for quite a while. So this is more of like a first impressions video. And well, either way though, peace and have a good one.